welcome fans of flip clocks where we're going to do a little restoration mathematics where one flip clock plus one flip clock equals one flip clock. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a GE model 7-4305 and uh, actually we're going to take two of them and we're going to make one good one because see this this model this clock here over here we'll call clock number two on the right the clock spins but the motor won't run and uh, so there's a problem there but the radio works on that clock now on this clock the radio doesn't work at all there's a nick in the face but the uh, clock mechanism runs so here's clock number one and we're going to start with this one because this one's going to be our main clock because the cabinet is really good on this one the other cabinet uh, has two holes drilled on the top and on the bottom as well um, so we're just going to get the knobs off this one I'll have to pry off here in a second, but it just pries right off. After we do that, we'll get all these screws, all the screws on the bottom have to come out. Now we've taken the speaker off the top part of the cabinet. And um, I, I, what we got here is this, this is the uh, internal part of this FM AM switch. And what we're going to try before we give up on the radio is we're going to put a little contact cleaner right in there. Now, I go ahead and do this here a little bit, and uh, it doesn't fix the radio, but I do it on the other clock, and it actually makes the FN come in better. So this this is important. Now, right there, I put the knob on there because that's the volume. And if you go on the other side here on the circuit board, and you look right where that would have come across, it's right back in there. It might be hard to see, but that's called a potentiometer, and it's it's just the volume control. And right in there is where you would spray a little contact cleaner and work that around and that would help uh, your radio work better now on the other clock there's a gear right here on the and that gear is chewed up and that's why the other clock won't work so it's not the clock motor when you look at this mechanism it's not a simple uh, cyclometer or rolling wheel clock it's really kind of fancy how these numbers flip around it looks like a ferris wheel almost so what we're going to do is, to do disassembly here, we just got to take all these screws out. This here, this is like some kind of shield, electromagnetic shield for this motor situation here. That's a sealed motor inside of an electromagnetic uh, field. Here, this, uh, all these screws got to be taken out. Now, this right here is hot. That's the main electric coming in. That's 110, 120. That could kill you. So, you got to take that screw out here. You got to take a screw out deep down in there. It's a screw. And there's a screw on the left side. But we just, just got to go ahead and start taking the screws out. And all of them have to come out. It's gonna be you definitely gotta make sure you're not plugged in here. This is real dangerous. It's one of the most dangerous clocks I've worked on because the it's straight up power right there. Anyway, you just start moving this stuff out after you've taken all the screws out, all the visible screws, and um, just start working it out. Now that let me put that aside. That holds the cord in. It locks the cord down. So we got this uh, power rail here that's going to come out and on the left side here, this is the radio, the circuit board and all that stuff. Um, it's not hard to get out, I'm just rocking it and taking my time to get that out. So I don't want to break anything. It's all, it fits in there tightly. But it comes straight out. And same thing with the clock mechanism, it's just a matter of taking your time and, and working it out. Now, if we set all this stuff over to the side, you'll you'll see that we're still attached to the bottom part of the cabinet here, right there. That's the cord uh, holder, and and you really can't get that out even if you unwind it, because the only way to get that cord out of that base there is to desolder it from the board th from there, that power rail, and you don't want to do that. Well, here, this right here, this is the part I want to replace. I'm going to replace everything. So I'm figuring I've got to desolder these lines. The speaker stays with that board. That way I don't have to mess with the tuner or anything. So we're going to take this whole part from the other clock and replace it on this clock. So it looks like we're going to have to... We've got um, a blue, the gray wire, and then there's a white wire that goes over here beside that uh, capacitor there. So... 
that's the one right there. And you've got to be careful because there's lots of plastic there. You just want to carefully desolder that. It comes right out. I won't show you the rest of them coming out, but after you desolder that, you just kind of work them through. And that's when I discovered that, oh yeah, the green wire's got to come out too. Now, I had to make a decision as to where to desolder that from the board or from down here where it picks up the power and I think the best decision is down low because I'd have to take that uh, tuner off of there and I'm risking having to de-string that thing and I don't want to do that so what I did was I started working on this to get this free so you see the red wire there that gives power to the clock and um, so I, I finally get that red wire off but the problem I run into is that because it's difficult for me to get this green wire off this this rail here, it ends up uh, pulling the lead out of that. That's a, at the very tip there. That's actually a uh, resistor. But thankfully, this is the part we're not going to use. We're, we're going to do it on the other get the other, get it from the other clog. Now, this is the face that comes off these numbers here, and that's the ditch where the uh, the light lays the channel where the light lays. You can see it's all burnt out and black. So what I've decided I have to do is I have to cut this tubing back so I can uh, free up this bulb. And it's going to be easier just to go ahead and cut the bulb off. It looks like a bug. So we're going to cut that off. Now I can slide this tubing off. And when I do it reveals a real long lead under there and the resistor is really low low down there okay when I when I take off the other thing there I find out that it's got a resistor on it too which is kind of strange I've never seen that before so here's my bulb I'm going to replace it with and I got these off of eBay a while back some kind of surplus from some place or another and they work really good uh, it's a, about the same size, a little smaller, but this actually puts out really good light. And I've, I do have the clock energized here, and I'm, you can see the, the clock flip in there. It's kind of cool. You know, I'm just testing to see. It'll actually run, even if I don't get those other resistors out, but I think I'm going to. I'm going to take all that other stuff off. Now, by this time, the dining room table is a is a wreck, and that's why I don't do this when my wife's home. So what I got, some mil-spec 24 gauge silver coated copper wire, is a double stranded. We're going to make a, a new bulb for that. I've already cleaned the top uh, with soap and water, rinsed it with distilled water. And then the other, the new part from clock number two, I've washed that, uh, trying to avoid getting the uh, circuit board wet. And you can see there's the resistors, I just snipped it off, I didn't damage it. Now the... Uh, the wire is blue instead of green on this clock for some reason. And I've got the new light in there and I've used some uh, metal tape to get it back on there. I've soldered it in, got rid of the other leads. I think that metal tape helps to reflect the light back down but also maybe helps act like a heat sink sort of to dissipate some of that heat. I don't know. You just have to make sure it clears those digits there. And no problem, we're, we're clear there. So now what we have to do is we have to basically get everything kind of in place, not, not together necessarily, but start lining things up because we've got to resolder these connections that we disconnected. So we're going to work in the, the parts and get them closer together so I can see which one to go in first. And I think I want to take that white um, wire right there and get that soldered back into the circuit board. Now I've, I've went ahead and put the blue and the gray back where they came off of. And we've soldered this back in without damaging the resistor. So now it's just a matter of putting all the screws back in place. And you can see here I've got that piece in there that's going to hold the cord in. So I'm putting this, this shielding back up and also keeps the cord tied down. So we just go through and put all the screws in all the places that we removed.
remove them. Hey, what? No, nah, that was a little tight there. We got to make sure not to over tighten when we're using this uh, cordless drill here. You can crack it, but here's the uh, faceplate that comes off. Came off a of clock number two, and it's not that hard to get off. You have to kind of squeeze the tabs in. Uh, you do have to take the cabinet off first to get to it. Putting it back in is a lot easier. It kind of snaps in the bottom. But the top, you don't feel it click in, and that's because it gets locked in when you put the cabinet on. This I've uh, cleaned with off of soap and water. That's our indicator. So now we're ready to close up. We've got the speaker in place, and you got to kind of tilt it in to get over that uh, post that. Uh, adjust the digits it doesn't snap in place but it does fit in very very snugly you know when it's when it's in right we'll test the slider make sure it's moving freely and we'll get all these uh, knobs back in place right now we can go ahead and just put all the screws back in and so here you have it you've got a clock that's lit up very nicely even in the bright room here you can see the orange glow We've got a clock that works, an alarm that works. We've got the radio. It works on both AM and FM. Now you can see the digits uh, rolling over here. I'm not doing that. I'm working the tuner there on the right side. So the clock's working just fine. Everything's ready to go. Now, this is the old clock. I'm going to tell you, you really should put the clock back together. It's going to be easier to use for parts later. So there you have it, the General Electric Model 74305. It is the clock that appeared in a Swiffer Sweeper, Swiffer Sweeper commercial, so we consider it a TV flip clock. When you get the time, come visit us at flipclockfans.com.